Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Enrichment for our next virtual only worship service. I would like to thank all those people who continue to serve us regardless of the fact that there is a quarantine in the state, but the conditions of the governor's order do allow a small group of people uh, to gather in the church building and provide a virtual worship experience. So thank you to all people from our technical department who make this opportunity for us available. I hope you are ready to study the Bible again. We will continue processing and trying to understand the situation that we found ourselves in recently in the context of a coronavirus pandemic. The situation in the world in connection with this disease, COVID-19, continues to develop fast. Here's a look at the statistics provided by World Health Organization as to the condition of this pandemic uh, as of April 4, 2020. There are over 1 million of confirmed cases of COVID-19, specifically 1 million 51,635 people have been confirmed to have this disease. Unfortunately, 56,985 people have already died from this pandemic. And uh, there are 207 countries and territories that are affected at current time. When we look at the breakdown by countries, uh, United States of America now leads the statistics with uh, 241,703 cases. Italy goes next, 119,827, then goes Spain with over 117,000, and so forth. When we find ourselves in this situation, we as believers ask the question of how to assess, how to comprehend, how to process all this data. What is the biblical outlook on reality in the context of pestilences, of pandemics? We have been studying a topic that's titled Pestilences in the Bible. And today is our third installment of this study. The first one was dedicated to Torah, the Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. The second sermon was titled Pestilences and the Prophets, the next portion of Holy Scriptures, and today we will be talking about the Gospels, pestilences and the Gospels. That's our topic for today. First of all, let's take a look at uh, the textology. Let's take a look at the text of the four Gospels. Textology is the science that studies a text, and we have four versions of the Gospels in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What do these books tell us about uh, pestilences? First of all, we need to note that the Gospel of John, the fourth one, doesn't have anything on the topic. But the three ones, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they are called synoptic gospels. According to Dictionary of Theological Terms, this uh, word synoptic is derived from a Greek word meaning to see everything together. 
It refers to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke because they describe the life of Christ in a similar way, often using similar words and phrases. So, taking the Gospel of John aside, because there is nothing in it on our topic, let's concentrate on the Synoptic Gospels and see what they have to say about pestilences. We go first to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 7. I will first be reading from King James Version. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. When reading this version, we see three things mentioned. Famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. But when we compare this version with uh, other modern versions, none of them mentions pestilences. For example, English Standard Version, the one that you're looking uh, on the screen, says there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. No pestilences are mentioned. What does the original say? In Greek, we have a phrase, kai eson tai limoi kai seismoi. Literally, there will be famines and earthquakes. Seismoi is earthquakes, where we get the word seismology, for example, or seismic activity and so forth. So the original mentions only two things in this phrase. And uh, it is a, a fact that in the earliest and most authoritative manuscripts, the word for pestilences is not used. So Matthew has nothing to show for the topic that we are studying. Let's go to Mark, second of the Synoptic Gospels. Mark chapter 13, verse 8 says, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. They, these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Pestilences, epidemics are not mentioned at all. In any of the versions of the Bible, and, of course, they're not present in the original. So Mark has nothing about our topic as well. Let's turn to the last of Synoptic Gospels, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 11. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great, great signs from heaven. We have the word pestilence is here, and it correctly reflects the terminology used in the original. In the original, there is this term also. So pestilences are only mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. Out of four Gospels, only one mentions pestilences and uh, only once. That's the textology. That's the information on the statistics and word usage in the text. Therefore, when many people ask today, is the COVID-19 a precursor or a sign of the end of the world, is it a sign of uh, the second coming of Christ? We have only one place to look at, to ask Jesus himself, what is it? Are pestilences, are epidemics, 
a sign of the end of times. To determine that, let's place pestilences in the words of Jesus and in history in their correct context. We will be reading backwards from Luke to Mark to Matthew and ask a question, what is the context of this phrase that Jesus uttered when he was ministering on this earth? Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 through 7. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things that you see, the day will come when they will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place. Disciples of Jesus were pointing to the grandeur of the Temple Mount and all the buildings erected there. And uh, Jesus replies, there will be nothing to look at shortly because Jerusalem Temple will be destroyed. After hearing that, disciples ask, when will it be? What is the sign of these things that they are about to take place? And answering this specific question, Jesus says, there will be earthquakes and famines, wars, pestilences, and so forth. So the context of the Gospel of Luke shows that Jesus is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem temple. Let's move to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. And as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? They will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As, as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? Again, as is uh, in the Gospel of Luke, here in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is answering the same question. The theme is the same. The time of the destruction of the Jerusalem temple and disciples want to know what will be the sign, how they could determine that it is near. Nothing about the end of the world so far. Now, the first of Synoptic Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all this, do you not? Truly I say to you, they will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when, the, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Only in this rendering of that famous conversation between the master and his disciples. Only in the Gospel of Matthew, we learn that in addition to the question of the time of destruction of Jerusalem temple, Jesus is also talking about something else here. Disciples asked the question about the second coming of Jesus. 
And the third question was about the end of the world, the end of the age. Again, Matthew 24, 3, tell us, when will these things be? That is the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Thus, we know that this conversation that Jesus had on the Mount of Olives, looking at the mount where the temple was, refers not only to the events surrounding the, the destruction of Jerusalem temple, but also the second coming and also the end of the world. So that's why it is proper to ask the question, are pestilences, are epidemics the sign of the end of the world and the second coming of Christ? So let's ask, are epidemics and other phenomena listed here a sign of the end? And uh, read what Jesus replies. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. When studying this topic, we will be working with three Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We'll be looking at all three synoptic Gospels because we know that they deal with the same topic and describe the same conversation between Jesus and his disciples. Matthew 24, 6 says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. Any time after these words of Jesus were written, throughout the centuries, any time when there was a war or rumors of war, any time there was a military conflict, many believers, many Christians asked the question, is it the sign of the end? Oftentimes, when there is any kind of war in progress, we could hear, we could read about those making claims that this military conflict is the last one. This is the sign of uh, the soon second coming of Jesus. Even over the course of my life, when there was a Persian Gulf conflict and many other military conflicts in the world, I've heard many times the statement that this is the one. This is the end. This is the sign of the end of the world. But what does Jesus say? What shall we make of uh, these uh, events? The Jesus, Jesus is telling us the following. He says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, this must take place, but the end is not yet. Or this is not the end. According to the words of Jesus, wars are not to be taken as a sign or the sign of the end. It's just not there. Jesus nowhere tells us that we should be attentively looking and calculating casualties or studying what's going specifically at any given place where there is a military, military conflict to be able to draw a conclusion that the end is near. No, says Jesus, it will happen. And it has happened, as we know. And it is happening, and it will be happening. But this is not the end. Wars are not to be taken as a sign of the end of the world. Then, Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 and 8. Jesus continues. He lists other phenomena and says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
I'm reading from King James Version now. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. King James Version uses the term sorrows, which some used to take as a, a disease or pestilence or epidemics and so forth. What is Jesus talking about? What is the sorrows that he is referring to? Uh, let's compare it to English Standard Version. It says, all these are but the beginning of the birth pains. And this is the correct translation. The birth pains or labor pains is the word that's used here. As it is used, for example, in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, that says, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not uh, escape. So the image that Jesus is using is not diseases, illnesses, or pestilences, epidemics. He is talking about labor pains, about birth pains. This is an image that we will go back to shortly, trying to understand the meaning of the message. But have you noticed what is uh, mentioned in connection to these labor pains? Is it the end or is it the beginning? What does Jesus say? Let's go back to the text. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows, or according to English Standard Version, all these are but the beginning of the birth pains. This is a beginning. This is not the end. This is not a sign of the end. What does this image tell us? What is the message about this labor of birth pains? Well, first of all, the message is of an inevitability. If everything goes as it should, when there are contracts, uh, contraction, contractions, when uh, birth or labor pains start, this is a sign that there will be a delivery, that there will be a baby coming into this world. So the first message is the inevitability of the end of the world. Uh, even since the time when sin entered our planet and became a reality on the earth, the earth is destabilized. There are many things, many phenomena in nature that uh, are going in the direction of complete chaos. We have more and more earthquakes. We have more and more natural disasters. And everything will progress. And it shows that the end is near. But it doesn't say, us, say to us when. We cannot tell by looking at the condition of the world, including pestilences, how soon the end will come. So the first uh, side of this image is the inevitability. It will definitely come. The second uh, side of this image is the intensification. Uh, in, the, in the same way as uh, labor pains, they intensify and contractions, they happen closer and closer together. And the closer we get to the actual delivery, the more of them are there and the, the more intense they are. The same way with natural disasters, says Jesus. But this is the beginning. This is not the end. We cannot tell for sure when the baby will definitely arrive, looking at the labor pains. 
Some women literally give birth within one hour. Uh, con contract uh, contractions begin, labor pains begin, and then there is a baby in one hour. Others uh, take 14 hours, 24, 48 hours to give birth to a baby. So looking at the pestilences and all other things listed here, we are not able to say which one will be the last. And this is what we read in First uh, Thessalonians 5, verse 1 through 3. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief of the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. The scripture plainly teaches us that these events, they could not be taken as the sign of the ends. It's impossible. It's impossible to tell. Pestilences, epidemics are not a sign of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when trying to make sense of the things happening around us in the world today, we need to know that nowhere in the Gospels does Jesus teach us th that we need to be looking at the outbreaks of different diseases as a sign of his second coming? The next question should be then the following. What is the appropriate reaction? Sometimes it is unsettling. It is a tumultuous time that we live in, in the context of the coronavirus pandemics. There are real people dying. There are medical professionals who are sacrificing not only their sleep, but their life in some cases to be able to minister, to serve those that are sick. What should be the appropriate reaction of a believer when facing the realities that we face right now? Let's go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 7. Jesus says, And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. New King James Version says, do not be troubled. Don't be scared. Don't be alarmed. Don't be troubled. This is something that should be expected. All these events are, unfortunately, a natural part of a life on this planet that was plagued by sin originally. So the people of God, they, sh of God, they should not be scared. Do not be alarmed. Do not be troubled. Do not be scared. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, first verses 25 and 26. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. These words of Jesus describe natural re reaction of many people, of people of the world. They are scared. They are in distress. They are perplexed. They are fainting with fear. But this is not what the believers are invited to do. Let's read verse 28 in the 21st chapter of Gospel of Luke. Now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, 
because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus tells, when, when you see all these things taking place, rather than being overwhelmed with fear and anxiety, straighten up, lift your head up, and uh, rejoice, because your deliverance is drawing near. The adequate, the appropriate reaction of a person of God would be to see all the things in the world as a, a, sign, a sign that the deliverance is coming. We don't know when, but it is coming for sure. Matthew 24, verses 42 through 51. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master set over his household to give them their food at their proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will send him he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed, he is not coming back soon, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at the hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There are two extremes of people reacting to calamities in the world. First is anxiety and fear. Wars, famines, earthquakes, epidemics are something that put people in the mode of trembling and uh, being overwhelmed. And the opposite extreme reaction is carelessness. Jesus says about a person who says to himself, my Lord, my master will not come soon. I have plenty of time. I don't need to think too hard about how spiritual I am, how well connected to God I am. What is the state of my relationship with people around me, with God? Do I worship him? Do I live as he wants and so forth? The second coming is far away. Pestilences are not a sign of the end of the world. Carelessness is the second extreme reaction. So both of them, fear on the one hand and carelessness on the other, could be damaging and could be fatal. This is what Jesus is inviting us to do. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 37. And what I say to you, to these disciples, what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake, be ready. It shouldn't be a factor whether there is a war, a famine, an earthquake, or an epidemic around us. It should not matter because we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our substance. All the time, he saved us. He died for us. He is coming back to take us home. And this is enough of a motivation to be alert, to be awake, and to be ready. Today, we have continued studying the topic pestilences and the Bible. 
we dealt with pestilences and the Gospels. The Bible says, do not be afraid and do not be careless, but be ready at all times. In our next sermon, God willing, we will study what the Bible tells us about pestilences in the last book of the Bible, Apocalypse, the Revelation.